This week, we conclude the story of Perrine's Sunray Pickles. Then, uh, uh, as Grandpa was putting these barrels together, he always had, I don't know, I don't know where he found that many barrels to start with, but to seal the barrel, he'd put wax on the inside and uh, coat them and then seal them up, put all these ingredients in there, and then he, once he got the barrel packed, he'd roll it out into the field, put it up on some kind of, uh, just get it off the ground, put wedges in there so the barrel wouldn't roll, and then he'd fill it with salt water. That was the curing stuff instead of vinegar, they used salt water. And so uh, he'd take his jugs and fill them, fill them, fill the barrels. And then uh, as the summer progressed, you could see the juice would come up in these glass jars. He'd put a glass jar on top of the barrel, put a cork in there, put a glass jar in there. And the juice, as the sun would warm the barrel, the juice would come up in these jugs. The sun would cure the juice, and at night when it would cool off, it would go back down into the barrel. So uh, did, did that probably for three to five weeks. And then every day when this stuff was in there, that would just bubble, it would gurgle. You could see bubbles coming up and, this, and it would just be curing, it would just be working down in there. At about the end of three to five weeks, then uh, uh, the pickles were cured. Grandpa would plug them, roll them into the shed, and he'd pop the lids off. And uh, not just pop the lids off, but you'd have to pull, the sta pull these sta uh, hoops off the staves and open these things up. And I often wondered, why didn't all the juice just run out on the floor he must have drained them somehow, but I don't know how he did that. But uh, we experimented with that here <laughs> last year. I'll tell a little bit about that later. But um, Grandpa would be have his kind of a screen dipper, and he'd dip down there, and he'd start packing the pickles. And when he'd open that, open that barrel for the first time, there was an aroma that came out of there. Your mouth would just water. You'd say, oh, man, I want to eat them pickles. You would just, I can, my mouth kind of waters just thinking about it. But there was that smell. There was just that smell every year when he popped that barrel open. It was just, you know, just, just mouth watering. Okay. Well, then, uh, that was kind of the end of it. Grandpa kind of business kind of faded out. He got done doing that. My folks did it a couple of times. Made a couple of barrels of pickles. As I was growing up through my teen years and before I left home, I think one or two times, Dad made a barrel just to kind of keep it going. And uh, then that was kind of the end of that. I got married, me and Linda got married in 77, and uh, we've been married for 36 years, and in that length of time, we decided we wanted to try to make some pickles. So we're kind of the third generation of primes that are making the Sunray pickles. Um, so last year, um, 2013, uh, my sister, had kind of a family reunion coming together. Now, my sister is Diana Durstein, and she was pushing me through the winter. She says, you know, we got to make a barrel of pickles. We got to do this. I got a bunch of family coming to make, you know, they want to see how this is done. So we started looking for a barrel, and we called uh, all different kinds of places, barrel making companies, very expensive, anywhere from three to $500 to buy a barrel. And we thought, man, we don't want to really do that. So we called wineries, thinking they might have some old barrels sitting around. And most wineries now, they, uh, they use steel vats, or stainless steel vats, and they don't have the wooden barrels, not too many. But we finally found one down by Alexandria, a winery that had barrels. And so I called them, I said, would you take one out, fill it full of water, and see if it holds water? And if it does, we're going to buy one. Well, 125 bucks for a used barrel, so that's how we got started. Okay, we had some friends, uh, Andy Erb and Tim Erb. Uh, they helped us probably 10 years ago put a barrel together. And Andy, he was a young guy then. Uh, he got a taste for them pickles and he loved them things. Well, as years went by, now it's been probably 10 years since we made a barrel, um, he said that he's been trying to duplicate that flavor ever since. So last winter, Andy got on my case. He says, we got to make another barrel of pickles. So my sister was telling me, and Andy was telling me, so I finally, okay, let's do this. So, so when uh, spring came, we thought, how are we going to do this? Andy said he would raise some of the horseradish and raise some cucumbers. And I said, okay, I'll line up the some more cucumbers and the garlics and stuff. And Diana, she'd line up some stuff. And so we were all going to do this. And so time went on. Um, I found a place, I think it was over by Holly, 
I said, yeah, we can get you three bushels of cucumbers at one time if that's what you want. Well, we did. And Andy said he'd bring a bushel. And Linda said that she could raise a bushel. And so by that time, we had like five bushels of cucumbers. And I'm thinking, ah, that's way more than we need. And we did find all the ingredients we needed. And so then all of a sudden, the day come together. We had everything together. The cousins all showed up. And my cousins from were from all over the United States. But they kind of do this little family reunion thing once a year. And so this year, they decided to meet at our place. Now, to me, uh, Don Prine was my grandpa. But to all my cousins, it was Uncle Don. Uncle Don told them about his pickle business, and they never seen it. So they all, their whole life, wondered how this was done. Well, they came out, and we put them to work. They were peeling, uh, peeling garlics, cutting peppers, and we had big, long tables with all these ingredients out there. And Andy Herb and Grandpa Jim Herb came over because they wanted to be in on this because they were, you know, always part of the family doing that stuff. You know, I don't know, it took several hours. And I'm thinking as I'm doing this, this is a lot of work because you line up all the ingredients, put it all together, and we only made one barrel. And I think back to Grandpa used to make hundreds and even a thousand barrels at one time. And I thought, I don't know how we did it. That is a lot of work. But so anyway, that's uh, kind of what, uh, what we've done. And uh, at the end of the, well, it took about five weeks. We did like Grandpa did. We put the ingredients in there, sealed the barrels, uh, rolled the barrel out, put the cork in it, put the glass jar on it. Well, we added the salt water in there and we tried to do it just like Grandpa did. And so uh, at the end of that, probably took about five weeks, uh, we cracked the barrel open and that first aroma took me back to when I was a kid. I went, I, it smells exactly like what Grandpa's did. It just, it was just kind of a neat thing. So anyway, uh, we, we uh, rolled the barrel out at the end of five weeks, put it in the shed and started, uh, I figured out how to drain the juice without getting it all on the floor. I stuck a garden hose in there and siphoned it out before I opened the barrel so I wouldn't lose all the juice. And uh, we started packing them. So we packed barrel, uh, gallon jugs, quart jars, five gallon. We ended up with like, I don't know, 40 to 50 gallons of pickles. It worked out just like grandpa's, tasted just like grandpa's. The only problem was I had is I had the ingredient list, but I didn't have the amounts. And so we've been, this is the third time that we've made a barrel of pickles. We've been married 36 years. And so we made three barrels of pickles in that length of time. And I think these are the best that we've done because we tried to change it a little. First few times we didn't put any hot peppers in it. But the last time we put some kind of hot peppers in there and it did add a nice flavor to it. So I asked mom, and dad separately, what can you remember about the ingredients? Well, mom told us kind of what the recipe was, but she didn't know how much of any of it. Dad had the same thing. He gave me a list of ingredients, but didn't know how much proportions to put in there. So we, we looked in recipe books and said, well, recipes say it takes this much dill to make a quart of pickles. So you just multiply that times to get 55 gallons or 50 gallons and a mom, helped with the first barrel, dad helped with the second barrel, and so or the last barrel. And so uh, we tried to keep this a little bit of a surprise for dad, this last barrel. Uh, and we invited him out for the opening. He didn't know we had made them. And uh, so we invited him out. And so we got a picture of dad and his job when he was young, he was, I think they called him a cooper or a hooper or something like that. His job was to seal all the barrels with the steel rings that went around the barrel took a picture of him standing there with his tools. I've still got grandpa's old tools that he used and so that was that was kind of neat to have dad up and so uh, he was out there stealing pickles out of the pickle barrels just like we used to when we were young.